Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about what's on my November and December TBR. So this will be my last TBR for 2023 and I can't believe that it's the end of 2023. This year has absolutely flown by and I do have nine books I believe I wanted to talk about for this TBR and as per usual, I'm not really so strict on what books I must read each month. I just kind of go with the flow of things. So let's just get right to the first one. This first book is actually from my last TBR that I did not manage to get to and this is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This is a magical realism book and for me, I am not that into magical realism so this one will either be a hit or a miss for me. I'm hoping I will enjoy it. In this one, there is a magical circus that appears unknowingly overnight and it is called Le Cirque des Rêves which means the Circus of Dreams in French. This circus is only open at night and there's a lot happening behind the scenes. Two young magicians known as Celia and Marco are in a fierce competition with each other, but there is a cost to win the game and that brings some challenges to Celia and Marco because they are falling in love with each other. I know that this author, Erin Morgenstern, is very known for her lyrical writing and for me that's very hit or miss but I have high hopes that I will enjoy this one because it has been sitting on my shelf for some time. I'm hoping to get to it ASAP. Next up is a sequel in a series and this is Us Against You by Frederick Backman and this is the sequel to Bear Town which at first were set in a small Swedish town known as Bear Town. This small town its winning point is its junior ice hockey team, which results in the townsfolk living and breathing hockey all day long. But after pivotal events in book one that really affects the townsfolk in and out, the hockey team is now being disbanded in Us Against You. With this news, it brings a heated hockey rivalry with their neighboring town, questionable pranks, and by the end of it all, there will be a dead Bear Town resident. I'm so excited to see what happens next with our characters and to see what they get up to and hopefully staying out of trouble. With Frederick Backman, his writing is really unique and he does several perspectives. There's a lot of characters and he has a really realistic tone of how he describes the going-ons in people's lives. And I really like that, but I'm very excited to see what happens next in this little town. Then next up on my list is a book I have been seeing floating around and I'm talking about Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zevin. To be honest, I did not even know much about what this book was about when I first picked it up. I just saw the cover and it was on sale so I picked up a copy. Reading the blurb from the back, it is about a unique love story. Sam and Sadie are our protagonists and overnight they hit a huge success with their blockbuster video game and overnight they have gained fame and a lot of wealth. Some events take place and this leads them to question about their lives and themselves. Turns out that a lot of things can happen and change in life. I am very curious to see if I will enjoy this one because I've heard that there are some cultural references and for me sometimes those cultural references go over my head. But I am very excited to pick this one up when I am able to. Next up is another sequel that was very highly anticipated for many people. It blew up on TikTok and I'm talking about Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. I do have the first book, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Love that spine. I do have a reading log up for Fourth Wing if you are interested in that. I will link that up in the eye above and in the description box below. But getting on to what this book is about, this book takes place in a college for dragon riders. I love that concept so much. We're following 20-year-old Violet who is entering this college. There is fierce competition to bond with a dragon and with that, it is very deadly. However, Violet is the daughter of the general and that really paints a huge target on her back, especially for the wing leader, Zayden. Fourth Wing for me was a fun book. It was really good. It's a fantasy romance. What really drew me in were the dragons. There is that romance factor, but there are really nice fantastical world building pieces that we get. We have a protagonist, Violet, who is dealing with a chronic illness, which you don't really see in books often. 
Some expectations from Iron Flame is that I want to learn more about the dragons and their secret society. They're so secretive about it. I hope we get to see a lot more details of that. I want to see Violet being violence. <laughs> I want to see Zayden be more of that brooding love interest but only have a soft spot for Violet. Really, I'm having a lot of fun with the series. I don't really have really serious expectations. I want to be surprised by any twists or turns. I want action. I want romance. That's basically it. That's all I want. <laughs> and I will be filming a Iron Flame reading vlog, so keep an eye out for that when that's uploaded. Next up on my list is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is an adult sci-fi fantasy with necromancy. We are following two main characters, Gideon and Hero. With Gideon, she is a swordswoman who was raised by nuns and she is preparing to run away from this life of servitude but along the way she runs into her childhood nemesis, Hero. Hero is a necromancer, a bone witch, and she needs to compete in a trial with other great houses' heirs. As the winner of this competition, you can achieve immortality but in order for a necromancer to even be awarded that, they need a sworn sword. And of course, that would be Gideon. Gideon the Ninth has been on my list for some time now and I'm very excited to see how I like the sci-fi because it's either a hit or miss. I do think that the world will be very unique and our protagonists are going to be badass. Then for the last couple books on my TBR, they are part of my massive reread of Akatar and the Crescent City series by Sergei Mass in order to prep for House of Flame and Shadow. I think that's the order. I hate these long titles, but bear with me. If you're not familiar with the Akatar series, but I think some of you are already quite familiar with it, we are following Feyre Artron and she is a human hunter and one day she stumbles upon a fey wolf and she kills it. However, there are huge consequences for that and she is whisked away to the land of the Spring Court. There she is seduced by the High Fae and their ways of living but she finds out that there is also a strange curse that's going on in the Fairylands. And with Feyre, she does not take no for an answer so she will do whatever it takes in order to help out the fairy people but also to help out her humans. That's a very rough summary of <laughs> A Court of Thorns and Roses but for this month I'm going to be reading book two, A Court of the Fairy. I'm actually like 60% of the way in for this one so far. I'm going to be tackling Court of Wings and Ruin, book three. Then this novella, A Court of Frost and Starlight. And then I'm not going to go directly into book four of the Akatar, but I'm going to be reading um, in publication order, House of Earth and Blood. This is the first book in the Cre Crescent City series. Yes, this is all to prep for a third book in the Crescent City series. The reason why I'm reading Akatar for the Crescent City series is that everything's intertwined. That's all I'm going to say about it because I think it's better if you just kind of go along and chug along on this huge train that are Sarah J Mass books. So far in Court of Mist and Fury, I'm having so much fun getting our reintroduction to the Inner Circle and all the people that I love and that we see less of one particular character. For me, I really have fun reading these types of books, especially when it's Sarah J Mass. I'm a sucker for them, but I can't help but like them. I think I will be doing some review videos on like my overall thoughts of some series from Sarah J Mass, but I do have like a should you read Sarah J Mass books video up if you're interested in that. I will link that, you know. Those are all the hopefuls for my TBR for November and December. Again, I still can't believe that we are at the end of 2023. It's been a long year also a really quick year. It's weird. Anyways, I hope you all had a wonderful day and give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads, and I'll see you all in my next one.